Okay, depends on main weight. In general, we use 10, depending on that type of air, probably 15 bushel, because they weren't controlled early. Went through and you're controlling them late. So how do we prevent this? 50, 100 push, 50 push, yeah, 10%. Someone said Prowl? Perfect. <laughs> as long as it's my product, I'm happy. If you look at that page of the book, if you're going right to the front, we should be in the corn section. It should look, I, I apologize for stealing your book. I should run an extra one. It should look like this. What product in there will work pre-emerge that you could do put on here so that you save those 17 precious bushels at $5 a bushel I heard earlier on? What is it? Quickly. Integrity. Thank you. It is integrity. There's other products there. So we missed it or we cultivated and we weren't going to go with that. Our program is that we go in or, uh, after. That's the page we're looking at. After. And we're going to control those weeds. What are our options? You could do a prowl marks, but not that three leaf stage. Again, still within the critical period. Say you put integrity down at a low rate and you're coming back in with the glyphosate just before the seven leaf stage, six leaf stage, and you want to clean it up and have some residual, what would be the next product you'd use? Armazon atrazine. I heard it from over here. So Armazon, let's talk about it. How many people have seen this uh, where You've got an untreated at the back, it's a test plot in the front, it's got glyphosate plus some other mix. It looks as clean as a whistle and your happy days, you know, this is the product I'm going to use this year because it showed up really good on a slide deck that some camera up showed me. How many of you guys have seen that before? What we did is what happens if we take the glyphosate out? What is the key to resistance management? What do we need to do to a weed when we talk resistance management? Do a mode of action. Do a mode of action. That means you have to kill it twice. Kill it with one chemical and another chemical. Because if it was just the one chemical that worked on it only, do you have two, two modes of action against it? No. Rotate groups. You can rotate groups as another option. But if right now it seems that what we're doing is trying to uh, go with two products in there to control the same weed so that it's dying both ways. So what happens if we take glyphosate out? If glyphosate's doing all the work, you could have something like this. We've got a competitor A, competitor B, and then that last product we talked about with Armazon and Atrazine. So we've taken glyphosate out, you can see how clean it is. The neat thing with Armazon is it does have grass control in it for a late uh, product. It, we put it on at 16 times the rate on corn and we can't kill corn with this product. It gives you a nice residual point into the year. Any questions on that? You know, how long does that last? We come back 40 days after. We still didn't have a glyphosate. You can see we're competitive A, competitor A, competitive check B, and the uh, Armazon same field, same spot is still clean. So some residual there. So, two products working against the weeds, it's working against grasses and the broad leaves. It can be put on up to that seven leaf stage. You put a nice uh, setup treatment down, come back in with that with your glyphosate, your last pass treatment. The nice thing about this is, how many guys are growing IP beans again? Quite a few. What's the neat thing if you have the cornfield really clean the year before? And in the fall, there's nothing there. It's a lot easier to control the weeds in the IP beans because when we get to IP beans and our soybean section, we notice how hard it is to control some of those weeds and what we have to do. Switching gears from herbicides to fungicides. I'm going to talk about Preax or how many people have heard of Preax or? Perfect. Uh, it's a mix of two products, Headline and Xenium. Headline's been around for a while. It's registered on quite a few crops. The neat thing about it is this excellence benefits, that plant health benefits that that Paraclostrobin gives this product. The new product, Xemium, is cool because it's giving us more consistent 
and continuous de disease control just by the way it goes into the plant. So it goes into the wax layer and it moves in the xylem. So it moves within the plant, moving out towards the end of the leaf. So it has some limited movement within the plant. It also moves from the top of the leaf to the bottom of the leaf. So in soybeans, we've did lots of experiments where we take a leaf of a soybean, we treat the front top, front top half of the leaf at the bottom and put a bunch of a, a frog eye fire or a, a frog eye on there, turn it over, it goes through after 10 days, it's cleaned up all the disease on either side or doesn't infect disease on either side. Cool little product. And the excellence, which we've talked about many times, gives us the greener leaves. It is actually changing the mitochondria in the plant. It allows stress relief, because we've seen it do uh, kind of cool things on canola. When we apply it on canola, and we get into some hot, dry <coughs> temperatures, it will keep the leaves upright and photosynthesizing longer than uh, something that isn't treated with it. So what happened this year? with Preaxor. We had it out on 50 trials in Ontario and Quebec, and we talked about consistency and why the two products are consistent. This year, 74% of the time, we were above seven bushels per acre. So we're getting payback 74% of the time. I haven't been able to say that with other fungicides on the consistency part for a number of years. So we can see what kind of percent winds we have. Looking at the piano graph, we had 10.7 bushels per acre, but notice how we've got more lines above, very few below, and a lot of them sitting around that 10 bushel mark. That's the consistency. We don't see it, haven't seen it with other fungicides. So quite exciting results with it. How many people have seen this picture on Twitter? Okay, this is uh, infrared uh, by a drone. Uh, they flew over it. This little strip in here, you can see this little green mark. Just uh, remember that because I'll point it out on this uh, on the next slide. But green is good. The plant is feeling good and healthy. Red isn't. And after we saw this picture, we went out there with the drone to see exactly what was happening. So what the drone come out? Hopefully this shows up. Oh, you can't see it. Good. You can see that little mark that I pointed out before was a bunch of trees. The guy uh, did it with a ground rig. He didn't want to have to swerve and knock over a bunch of rows, so he just missed that portion uh, with the preaxor. So you got untreated, the brown. There's a number of different varieties in there. It is not varietal because when we swing around here, you can see how the boom drifted over the end of the rows. If it was varietal, there would be different strips in there all the way along that headline or headland where we've went with the uh, applicator is got is greener. So we've got uh, some extra plant health there, but the main difference here is northern corn leaf blight control. Also, when we pop up here, you can see this back field right up here is the same uh, grower had this field. He treated half of that field. So some cool results, not often we see that kind of uh, uh, you know, lines in the field that uh, uh, distinct as well as that long. It lasted a number of, uh, of days, often it's five to 10 days you might see that. So what, was, uh, what happened here is there was 29 bushels extra yield on the preaxor treated, the greener spots. It was a little higher in moisture. We've always said around 1%. Last year with the uh, shortage of heat and the weather that we had, it was up to a little higher this year overall at about 2% on all our trials, 1.5% uh, to 2%. We had a return on investment of 315%. And when we talk about plant health benefits and what it does on stocks, not too often we can get some really good shots. We know anecdotally, everybody says, you know, it stood a lot better, it stood a lot better, which we understand because we're controlling a lot of the diseases and preventing stress within that plant. But we've heard about the wind event that went through. This is south of the 401, that huge wind event that went through. A guy crawled up to the top to unplug his elevator leg, and he looked out and saw this. This also went a, a picture similar to this on Twitter. And uh, when he went up to saw, he called us and says, you won't believe what I saw. And you can see we still have some lodging within the field, 
So this side's treated, this side's treated, that's the untreated check through the middle. 115 kilometer an hour winds. And again, in an area that had above normal uh, northern corner leaf blight, that represents about one to two miles an hour average for combining. It also represents a lot of volunteer corn. And if I move forward, we can go over the yields. It's 192 compared to 147. So we do get some stocks uh, strength. We don't see it that, sometimes don't see the visual like that, although you still see where it was down within the treated section, but uh, again, the yield and uh, the results of Preaxor. I'm going to switch gears to soybeans. Who's keeping track of time for me, John? Yeah, a couple more minutes. Two more minutes. I started with 10 and I did Okay, soybeans, uh, we'll move quickly through that. If you move to the soybean section, you'll see this. I just want to highlight on that, uh, that page I showed you on the rewards, high stick, uh, with the purchase of Becker Underwood, which is the company I came from <coughs> with BAS, uh, into BSF family. Uh, high stick was uh, one of our products. It's now part of the grower rewards, and this is where it's incorporated into, uh, for you, the grower. Also, we've got a number of IP uh, soybean products. I want to talk a little bit about Optil. Lots of choices out there. It's not easy anymore to grow IP beans. There's no silver bullet. We have to do a whole bunch of mixes of a number of products because we've got uh, group two resistance, we've got tricene resistance, we've got everything going on as far as resistance goes, and we're putting everything together to try to find out what works the best. The most consistent product that we've had for the last while is Frontier Plus Conquest. What's the cool thing about Frontier Plus Conquest that I mentioned earlier on? We'll give you $3.33 for using that mix. So Frontier Plus Conquest, there's uh, the Action Pack offer is involved in it. It's the most popular, it's the most consistent, it's the most supported program that we have. Uh, the other one that's moving is Frontier Plus Optil or Prowl Plus Optil. Uh, both these products here with the Frontier helps out on our nightshade problem, which we had some issues last year on some of the fields, mainly because of a lot of the rain that we had. Uh, the Frontier Optil, and we're going to talk about vertical tillage on it, but the Optil and Integrity and Aragon are what is being used. Someone, uh, has anybody talked about uh, resistant flea bait? At all? Okay. So the products that uh, they're using, some of the 401 in the areas that they got glyphosate resistant flea bane, uh, the Kixor molecule, which is in Aragon, it's also in Optil, and it's also in Integrity. Those products are being used to uh, control the glyphosate resistant flea bane. In corn, it's fairly easy. Dicamba works very well, so that would be your marksmen's or distincts in crop for corn. Soybeans, it's first rate. First rate is a group two. If you've got group two resistance, you could have some resistance to first rate. It all depends on uh, your field and your weed spectrum. The other option I've got on the bottom there is going with a Frontier or a Prowl ahead, come back in with Clean Sweep. It's, it's a weather, we call it a weatherproof op option because your pre-emerges, if it turns dry, then you get weeds escaping, right? If you go pre-emerge and come back with a two-pass, generally your weed control is better because you, uh, you don't have the same weather at that one time that could affect the weeds. So Optil was designed for glyphosate-tolerant beans no-till. That's what we put it together for. That's what we priced it for. It was a setup treatment for that. Now we're finding different uses for it. But the, the question's always been, well, I'm not no-till, I, I vertical till. And there's a bunch of equipment out there, a vertical till equipment, does it work in a vertical till? So we went and did a project last year, and we did uh, numerous different methods, numerous different depths, everything, uh, you name it. We looked at it, put op-till on there to see if the weed control and everything held, and we can uh, happily report that as long as you're not turning that like you would with a disc, it will work and you'll get the weed control. So this is uh, one of the fields that uh, we did some work on. You can see the dandelion pressure, it was a very big dandelion. So Optil 
will color dandelion. It works very fast, but it doesn't translocate into the roots. So if you're putting glyphosate on and you're going to kill dandelions and you're adding octil, what is going to kill the roots in that mix? The glyphosate. So you put on the amount of glyphosate that's required. So if the dandelion's this big, what do you do? Plow. No, if the dandelion is, say, this big, the old two liter rate, make sure that you're using the glyphosate rate that you need to use to control your dandelions. The, the uh, octil will give you faster burn and uh, help the control, but it can't be relied on for all the control. That's one day after speed. We did a survey, everybody liked how fast it worked when they used it early on as a setup for, uh, for uh, vertical till beans. Three days after, there's 10 days after. This was fairly aggressively vertical tilled. Uh, it was tilled uh, four days after application. You can see that they're, they're still a little green. We probably missed the uh, rate on the dandelions. 38 days, he was going to go in the next day and spray with glyphosate to clean the field up. There's the odd small dandelion in there that would get cleaned up at that time, not a total miss. So we can use it under very heavy weed uh, pressure and vertical till. Glyphosate resistant flea bane, uh, I don't know, we see any in this area? Not yet. Not yet? Soon to come, so I'm not going to talk a lot on it, just that the product that they're using is they're trying to get Aragon, Integrity, or Optil ahead of the bean or corn crop to be able to control this weed. There isn't a whole lot of other options for their burn now. Okay. This, this picture right here is of some of the test plots. Uh, you can see how thick it is. That is one missing plant three years ago, four years ago now. Two years, he says, boy, I've got a little bit of a problem in this corner, or in this field, and this is the population he had last year, so that's how fast it goes. So three years, he was up to 7,000 fleet mains per meter <coughs> square. So it is an issue. Uh, the biggest concern is multiple resistance, so group two resistance plus resistance to uh, glyphosate. And what happened with Preaxor on soybeans? Uh, just want to uh, let you know that we do have the MRLs for uh, Preaxor for soybeans. You still need to contact who you're selling or who you have the contract with and make sure that it'll allow you to use Preaxor. It is their decisions because if they're shipping only to Taiwan or Hong Kong, uh, we do not have it set up there yet, but all the rest are. Most of the majors are, I don't know, your contracts uh, for IP beats. You talk to other. Good question. Good question. So most people have been approached. I know here in agricultural communities as well, Snowblins. So most of them are on board, but uh, we do need to follow up if you've got a contract, uh, what they're taking. So when do we apply it? This is always a question. R2 about R2.5. You can see right there at the bottom. It's just when you start to get a little bean starting on the bottom, it's in between that and having uh, four nodes on the top with flowers. Okay, again, consistency. We talk about the two products together and the Zemium bring consistency. 78% of the time, we're above two bushels per acre. And that represents a piano graph similar to this. This is 55 trials last year, 3.4 bushels per acre on average. So Praxor is bringing more than what we've had before as far as uh, headline goes. It has the full rate headline in it, plus we've got the secondary product, which we expect to get that more consistent uh, improved results over the past. I know last year we've had, uh, we've talked a little bit about white mold, just to, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if we're gonna have it next year or not. Uh, I know in the 29 years that I've been in ag, uh, and grew up on a farm, uh, it was not something that I ever worried about in soybeans. We always had a little bit here and there. We've had years where it is bad. The one thing that we do know, you can see that we do have some pretty good suppression. 
Preaxor has white mold suppression on the label. If you've got a field that is prone or a, ver a variety in there that you think is a concern with white mold, there is a higher rate that you could use at that R2.5. Get your suppression. If the year goes bad like last year where it's wet and we're getting emergence of, uh, or of sclerotia uh, blasting off and catching flowers all the way through the year, your option is to come back in with a secondary uh, fungicide that controls white mold specifically, such as an Allegro, and use that to control it. And I'm going to skip through, uh, just, John, it's the last slide. Uh, twin line on oats, we did a trial up north, and uh, this is, uh, there's two combines in there, so we only have one yield monitor on one combine. You can tell the dark blue was higher. This was a one-shot application of twin line on oats. Uh, 16 bushels per acre, one shot of a fungicide on spring cereals or winter cereals for straw. If you're selling straw at six cents, one shot is going to give you approximately $20 an acre at six cents in the windrow for straw, uh, based on straw. Was that twin line put on? A twin line on oats was put on flag. Okay, so if anybody is growing oats, uh, a neat little program that's working really well in the West for us that we've been talking about is headline in at 120 mils with your, uh, uh, with your um, uh, herbicide treatment, a late herbicide treatment, then come back in a flag with twin line and, and we'll get, uh, we've had even a little bit better results. That was just a one shot application. I'm gonna go through this, just something on uh, the economics of straw. So one fungicide application. So treat, if you're selling straw and your uh, those spring cereals, you need to treat them like a crop and not just use it as a rotational basis. If you're working on straw, you will get a payback on your fungicides plus the yield on the straw. Yeah, what is it for What's that? You're not for straw. Yeah. You should be 10. Yeah. Now, <laughs> if 10 holds up in the row, yeah, then my numbers are too low. That's it. That's all I have. Is there any questions? <laughs> <laughs>